I explained in our first class that in the 1960s, communication scientists started to pay more attention to message construction and deconstruction under the influence of semiotics and literature studies. We adopted from literary theory the idea that everything that communicates something is a text that can be read. The most influential model from semiotics was perhaps this 19th century model by Ferdinand de Saussure, in which he explained that a sign was made up of two things. First of all, a signifier, which is a form of the sign, and secondly, the concept it represents, the signified. The word love is a set of black lines to a white background, in this case on your computer screen. That's the signifier. The signified is the concept of love. If we take a traffic light, the signifier is a red light hanging over the road. The signified is the idea that you have to stop. But the process of giving meaning to the sign, in other words, the signification, is not the same for everyone. Although it's quite clear for most people that they have to stop for a red light, for Judith, it also means that she will arrive late at her job interview. She will react very differently to the red light than Meg, who was not in a hurry at all. Semiotics tell us that there are two levels of signification, denotation and connotation. Denotation is the first order of signification, the explicit meaning of a sign, in this case a red light. Connotation is the second level of signification. It is what the denotation represents, all associated meanings. In this case, it means stopping, but it also results in anger and frustration for Judith because she might be late at her interview. We can easily imagine different people reacting very differently to this sign, adding their own unique background to the signification process. So embedded in this model is the idea of polysemic messages, messages with a different meaning for different people. Some signs have a widely shared connotation. On a denotative level, it's a black little drawing against a white background. On a connotative level, most people will recognize this as the representation for the ladies' room. Of course, on a very personal level, the connotation will still vary depending on how bad someone needs to go. The Jacobson model from 1960 is a clear example of how these ideas were adopted by communication scientists. It combined the well-known transmission perspective, sender, message and receiver, with several of the elements we just discussed, but with a different name. Each message, according to the Jacobson model, refers to something outside of the message, a context. A red traffic light refers to the concept of stopping. A love letter refers to the concept of love. Another new element was the explicit mention of the code of a message, which is the form that a message takes. In semiotics, the signifier. So in our two examples, the codes are a red light and a letter consisting of words written in a specific language. This letter code requires a complicated skill set. One has to be able to read, but also know the specific language in which it was written. Then, when the explicit meaning was read, the individual audience member can add his or her own associations to the signification process creating a unique outcome on a receiver level.